Welcome to track number 12 of the message of sacrifice. I want all the pastors right here in the front. Listen to me, I'm going to talk to the pastors in front of you. The next point has to do with pastors. No, come this way, wear that chest. Pastors. This way, just come this. There's one here by Louisa. Here, 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 this way please. This way. Those two chairs are, are not allowed. These two chairs here. Now, pastors, are you there? Are you there? Congregation, do you want me to hear what I'm going to say? Yes or no? Why do you want to hear? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice. And Jesus looking unto them saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. We have left what? All and have followed thee. I want to say to you pastors, right, your ministries are limited by what you are prepared to leave. Are you listening to me? You see, I'm preaching generally, but I've come to this point that you cannot be a minister of a certain ranking. You know, no, I, I, would not, I would not like you to, when you go back, you write down what you remember. I would not like you to be, I would not like to, 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 to deceive you. you. Your ministry is limited by what you leave behind. In other words, if you carry a lot, you can run only a certain speed. Amen? Amen? Amen. Pastor George, God is expecting you to sacrifice. Pastor Kweku, God is expecting you to sacrifice. Lady Pastor Rosemont, God is expecting you to sacrifice. Lady Pastor Louisa, God is expecting you to sacrifice. Except you sacrifice you are going to be where you are without the sacrifice. Lady Pastor Joyce, God is expecting you to leave something behind. If you don't leave it behind, you will never go to certain places. Is that not so? Pastor Joel, you are supposed to leave certain things behind. Peter said, we have left all and followed you. You are also supposed to leave all and follow him. All means all. Peter said, we've left all. We've lost all. Ah, it's too hard. Okay. You write your own Bible and preach it in your own way. Okay? Don't try and contribute to the Bible. Pastor Kojo, God is expecting you to leave behind things on the altar and follow Him. There's no other way. I can't pretend to you. You are limited by what you can leave. I said you are limited by what you can leave. BDR, you are supposed to leave behind a whole lot of things. Maybe your education, maybe your future, maybe your career. I don't know. Maybe your money. Leave it behind and follow him. Pastor Michael, that's your church here, Maryland. The size is limited by what you are prepared to leave behind. You are prepared to leave behind your sleep. You are prepared to leave behind your friendships. You are prepared to leave behind your television. You are prepared to leave behind your career and your job. God sees long before it even happens. And he says, yes, he has left all and followed me. Pastors, I'm speaking to you. I'm not preaching in the congregation. And all that I said means what it means. What you think, it doesn't mean. That's what it means. And the, 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 the impossible that you think that I'm not talking about, that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And that's what God is talking about. <laughs> Amen? We have left all and followed thee. And the level 31 says, but many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first you may take your seats right here in front don't go back to your seat if you came from the back because we are ending amen uh, tell the person next to you if that's what they said to the pastor then where shall we stand <laughs> Kathy 
We have left all and followed thee. Amen. God is expecting more. Maryland, more. I believe that. Let, 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 me, let me tell you something. In London, we have different lay pastors, pastoring different churches. Pastor Richard, who is our senior pastor there, has got a very large church. Now, we have several other churches. Now, amongst the metropolitan churches in London, one particular church has grown faster than all the other churches and has become bigger than all the others. I went to visit that church recently and it, there, were, there were more than a hundred people there. It was a very large congregation. Now, as I looked, I saw the difference between the pastors of the churches. You see, the pastor of that particular church, he's very much concerned about even be, being a full-time minister, although he's not a full-time but he's very interested and he wants to live although he's got a lot of wealth and other things he's blessed he's he's, he's on that line and wants to put it down and he's working at putting it down that's why that's why his church is the way it is because in his heart the thing is already gone if i said he hates his work now he's richer than most of you here i don't know how rich you are but he's richer than most of you you are poor here. Father, we break that hippie curse here in Jesus' name. I release you into G7. <laughs> the difference in the church, and you see some of the pastors, they are with churches with a, a large populated area. The churches can grow. But the pastor is not prepared to put down. You see, this, the preacher says, we, look, we have left all. All. What is left? Of my life. Nothing. Except what God is using. Your ministry is limited by the things you are prepared to leave behind. If you take it with you, you go short. Let's face it. Let's face it. If you are carrying a big suitcase, heavy like that, how far are you going to be able to walk? If you are carrying nothing. Have you not seen the Olympic Games? Now they are almost naked. They are almost naked. You see the men and the women, they are almost totally naked now. Because they are trying to live as much as possible, to go as further, as, as far as possible, and as, as fast as possible. Amen. How many are blessed tonight so far? Wonderful. Even as you are tired, you are being blessed. Amen. We shall continue tomorrow. But let me give you one more. Sacrifice to receive more blessings on earth. More blessings on this earth. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Verse 30, and we read it. And Jesus said, There is no man that has left house or brethren or sisters. Amen. Have I given you the point? Sacrifice to receive what? More blessings on earth. Amen. How many want more blessings on earth? You see, the way up is down, and the way down is up. Amen. Pastor George. The way up is down and the way down is up. I have many blessings on this earth which I never wanted. Which are not my aim. But which are many people's... I was telling some of my people in the church. I said, you continue to seek after riches. The riches will continue to run away from me. that I'm not seeking after those things. Will be, I will be the one getting those things. And you that you are searching for the things will be going and coming to me. <laughs> I said, you continue, search. you continue searching for them. Look, I'm, I came to let, tell you, you are going to work for God in this Maryland that you came and you will see the difference in your life. Amen. It's time for us to reach out. It's time for us to grow. Maryland, you should be sitting more than 100 people on Sundays by now. I said, you should be sitting more than 100 people on Sunday morning by now. But I don't think you have. Do you have a hundred people sitting there on Sunday mornings? Yeah. Flavia, you say at all, isn't it? She says at all. Bronx. Bronx is the most 
Don't you say Bronx, then you are, you know, you are where the masses are. Yeah. Your church should be, t- Manhattan is far from, from where people live. People don't live in Manhattan. Bronx, Bronx church must be the church, even the biggest church. Yeah, the biggest. Because that's where the masses are. Or oh, I lie. How many have heard of Bronx, the Bronx? Is it not a base? <laughs> Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and for the gospels. But he shall receive what? A hundredfold. When? In heaven. When? No, are you with me? My brother, are you annoyed? You are feeling sleepy. Where's your Bible? Oh, let's read it. Let's read it. <laughs> Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. We'll close by 12 o'clock. We'll close. You see, we are prepared to be. Let's be tired for Jesus. This is for the word of God. Eh, one service is a, is a lot. Is enough. We are tired. No. You are prepared to sacrifice for devils. But when it comes to the church, to stay up a little, then we begin to look at our watch and say, eh, it's enough. Enough is enough. But we are prepared to go to school to learn so that we can learn more and sacrifice more to devils. <laughs> the things they sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. He's telling us who they are sacrificing that thing. The thing they sacrifice, Paul is explaining who exactly they are sacrificing. They are actually sacrificing the things to devils. And that's why he has to say, because people don't know that it's actually to devils. That's why I'm telling you, quick, the things you are sacrificing, actually you are sacrificing to devils. Notice verse 30. He shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, Land with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and the last first. Amen. How many want all these blessings on this earth? Do it. Do it. I said do it for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. You're going to have children in the Lord. Mothers in the Lord. Fathers in the Lord. Sisters in the Lord. Many people are lonely. They don't have brothers. They don't have... I have people who are my family. They are not even my blood family. But they are more like my family. Because I, 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 God has given me brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and children. Plenty. Amen. God has given me a house. Today I'm staying in a house in Maryland. God has given me a house to stay in. I was not doing the work of it. I wouldn't have anywhere to stay in Maryland. Well, I don't know anybody here. I would have come here. I don't know anybody here. But that's the reality. That's the reality. God has given me my own house. I thought I would never have a house. But I have a house. All the things I thought I was giving up, God has given them all, all those things back to me. And people who are following those things, I told somebody that you continue to search for the things. They will be moving and they will be coming towards me. <laughs> Uh, and it's happening. The things that people are, are running after are also running and they are also coming to me. I'm sitting there doing my work. But when I tell them, something has passed by my side. You see, you know what? You know, right now, you know where I am now. I can't even tell you some of the things that God has blessed me with. So when I say for security reasons, for security reasons. Honestly, this is at this point, normally when I'm preaching, I get up, I will tell you so many things. But there are some things I can't say. Oh, yeah. You hear some, hey, we went to the church. Oh, do you know what the pastor said? <laughs> but the land, the houses, the cars, the, the things that people want and that they are looking for. Maggie, Maggie, but don't you remember? Were you not around when I was a medical student? Do you not remember me? Very lanky. I was more like, more like a ghost. 
Maggie, don't you remember? Was there any hope for this church? Not at all. I, I didn't hear you. What did you say? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> okay. She's laughing. Give her some time, please. <laughs> Maggie, what did you say? Not at all. Not at all. Judith! Do you remember us in the little classroom downstairs? Was there hope for us? By faith. By faith, yes. <laughs> By faith. But Maggie said there was no hope at all. So you see me giving my life to this thing. You know, for, for a moment. You get it. But it is, it is worth it. Even if those things have not come. It's still worth it. Because that's not what we are in it for. It's worth it. And I, I, I feel that God is going to bless you with many blessings on this earth. I called a brother in our church and I said to him, Brother, your name is what? John. I said, John, God is going to give you more. This guy has a little gray hair, more than John. I said, John, God is going to give you more than when you had in the world. And God has started to do it. I said, God has started to do it. I said, God has started to do it. I said, we are going to be in the church together and we are going to be blessed in this, this church. I'm glad Maggie is here listening to me preaching because she was in a little room, that little classroom there listening to me when I was preaching some years ago. And we are going to be again preaching in some years to come. You will be around. And you remember, yeah, you might remember those, those times. I was a struggler. Things will be different. Because God is going to take you into higher realms. Because you are going to learn the power of giving. I said you are going to learn the power of giving. There are some of you here, you are going to support me. And you are going to say, Bishop, look. Although I don't have much, I've decided that every month I'm going to support with $300 the work. Whatever it is, I'm going to do it. $300 can employ somebody full time. Do you know that? In Ghana, $300, 2.1 million cities. If you give $300 specially, you are employing somebody to be full-time on your behalf. <laughs> I said, you are employing somebody to be full-time on your behalf for the meantime before you come. <laughs> now, Louisa, have you thought about it? I said, with $300, you can support somebody in a sacrificial way. The person will be able to be employed or work for the Lord full-time ministry, although you are not the one, you have made it possible for a human being to be 100% working for the Lord. Some of you should think about doing that. I said, some of you should think about doing that. Oh, yes. Yes. And you'll be surprised at the doors that God will open on your life. How many want to do that? Is there anybody who wants to do that? No. Don't raise your hand if you don't want to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that if you feel that you want to do it, and that is to support somebody, and say $300 in every month, I want to give $300. I'm going to make somebody be employed and work full time on my behalf. On my behalf. Be working for me, I'm coming. <laughs> work for the Lord, I'm on my way. I'm in Maryland earning money and sacrificing to devils for the meantime. But you are going to sacrifice some money so that you can sacrifice to the Lord for me. <laughs> Pastor Michael, this is not a good idea. Let's say you are here. You can't be full time because of setting your mortgage and your wife and this and that and various things that you are involved in. But they say, look, one, two, three, I can give... I can make three people, two people, one person be full time on my behalf. I'm sitting here, I'm supporting somebody. He should start sacrificing to the Lord. Apart from your first and best and everything, you can do it. Is there anybody here who would like to do that? Raise up your hand again if you like to do that. Good. 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 Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand clearly. Put down your hand. I'm going to say it again so that you'll be sure about what you are saying. <laughs> huh? Oh yeah. No, I'm serious. You are going, it's something that you are, you are going to do apart from, apart from your first and best. 
It's something you're going to say, look, I'm going to give $300. I'm going to send it personally. You're going to send it personally. You're going to pass it through the offering. It's going to go to support. I've got somebody who's doing that already. It's not going to go for me. I, I don't need $300. Hey man, have you seen me coming here to collect your tips before? Please. We are talking about supporting the work of God. If you feel that you would like to do it, and that you would like to do it at least for a year, because, I mean, you are, if somebody is full time, you have employed, you can't say, after a year, hey brother, I, <laughs> I can't be sacrificing to the devils all the time for you. <laughs> but you want to do it. You think you can do it. And you feel, and I, I, I think it's one of the greatest things. You know, God revealed it to me and showed him. He said, look, if somebody gives $300, I can employ somebody to work for the Lord. Who is ready to work? That's true. Don't you think it's a good idea? If you think you can do it, raise up your hand. Raise up your hand high. I still got the same hands. Nobody has dropped out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. Uh, Pastor Michael. I've said it three times. They are still insisting on raising their hands. It means that God is moving. Amen. I'll meet three, all of you after service. Amen. If you are serious. I'm going to employ people. In fact, I have people employed. Before I left, I called our, our accountant and I said, if we employ one, two, three, four, five, six, how much is the bill? And he brought over almost 100 million cities. And I said, wow. It, it's over our offering and everything. And I said, if I can get people to support and finance, I'm supporting you. Because me, when I became full time, I didn't want salary, but somebody was sending me money every month. That is how I, that's how I came to be full time. That's what has made me here. I'm always grateful to my my big sister because of what she did. I'll get the money, I change it, I keep some to reverse that I keep some. <laughs> Why do you keep people la- laughing? You keep laughing. I look like a clown, you see. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a powerful thing. A move you can make can change lives at different places. Oh, man. What you cannot do by virtue of various things that you are entangled in, you can say, me. I got one doctor friend. He does that every month. He says, $300, $300, $300, $300, and employ somebody. It's a separate thing is for that thing. And it makes somebody employed. So when you get to heaven, you arrive, and say, what have you done for the Lord? <laughs> Please, you can ask my bishop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And through that work that somebody has been able to work for the Lord. Man, so churches. Oh, for you, because you are financing personally. Because is it not an exciting idea? Have you ever thought about that? So even you, by working, can make four people be full time in the Lord. As you continue to sacrifice to devils, others are doing the work of God. And, in actual fact, then you will not be sacrificing here. The sacrifice is now not to devils, but to directly to God. Although you are working for for, for devils. <laughs> it's actually now a sacrifice to the Lord. George, I want you to I want you to use your Pastor George, I want you to use your talent for Jesus. Huh? Your abilities for Jesus. Everything that is in you. I was talking to one business guy and he looked at me, he said, Bishop, if you were to be a businessman, you would be a very, very smart businessman. Many people have told me that. And I, I sat him down and I said, you know what, I've used, I use all my intelligence and all my gifts and anything God has given me, I use it fully for the ministry. I don't have any business. My father died in 1994 when I was in Zurich, in October 21st, of October, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And when he died, he left us a hotel. Since he died, the hotel is standing there. People have asked, are you not going to do anything? What are you doing? This and that. I said, look, if I start this business, I know. I've run that hotel before. I can't combine it. Let the thing be there. We'll just sell it off and let it go. I know I cannot do it. I'm giving my time, my life, 
my concentration and even my wife. I, I told my wife, you also be in the thing. Let's leave my children. I want my children to be pastors. I've given my children to the Lord. I lay hands on them. Sometimes when they are sick, I lay hands on them and pray for them. And let them serve you. Let them work for you. Let them sing in the church. My everything for the ministry. You to support it now. Do something and join yourself to it. I'm telling you, this is an opportunity for you. I wish I would have had that opportunity if I was in the, you know, secular working, 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 wondering what I'm doing in this life. I wish I'd have had such an opportunity. If I do that, I can also be there. Even you have helped the work of God. You have. Continue and don't stop. In fact, go higher. From the first time that I knew Yvonne, she's always helped the work of God in, in, in Maryland. Always. And God is saying, don't stop. Carry on. And go higher. You'll be rewarded. Do you think he's forgotten? Even me, I've not forgotten. How much I see you. Do I tell you such things? I don't tell you such things. But God knows. I remember. And I know. <laughs> and go higher. You'll be surprised. You get what they'll be mentioning. Me, me besides, it's you. It couldn't be them. Who? It is you. <laughs> It is you. It is you. It is you. I see you walking the streets of God with joy. Amen. Thank God I had the opportunity to do something for Jesus. Thank God I had the, the chance to work for Him. And even, look, we were going to do a crusade. Right now as I'm talking, Reverend Saki, our crusade evangelist, he's in uh, Kade or Begro, in some village somewhere in Ghana. Every Wednesday to Friday, we are in one of the Eastern Regional District Capital. We are going to 110 District Capital every week. The track is somewhere with the stage, generator, light, equipment, everything, cars, they are all there. We have employed about five people. They are moving from District Capital to District Capital, from the South to the North. We were going to do that, those crusades. I stood in stage and I stood on stage and I said, I want, we want to build a steel stage. It's going to cost six million cities. At that time, it was maybe like six thousand or seven or ten thousand dollars. And I said, I want to build it. Who is going? To, I want five people to use. Some of you were there. Were you in? Kojo, were you in church when I did that? It was a Sunday morning. Anybody remember? After church, a man came to me and said, I'll pay for the stage. I'm like, five million, whatever. So I'll give it to you tomorrow. That's all. Hey. Every crusade that Reverend Saki stands on the stage preaching and souls come to give their life to Christ. The man who built the stage, his shares are inside. His shares are inside the souls. Because Reverend Saki has nothing to stand on to preach unless the man builds the stage for him to stand on to preach. He's standing on his five million for years. Please add yourself to the rewards. I say add yourself to the rewards. Don't lose God. I said, don't let your guards go on vacation. Be here. Let them be alert. God is going to use you. Lift up your hand. Let's pray. Father, thank you for an opportunity to give and to be included in what you want us to do, Lord. Thank you for a chance, an opportunity to sacrifice for your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Bless your people as they begin to sacrifice. Bless Pastor Michael and Rachel in this church as they begin to sacrifice in a new and a different way. Bless the hands of those, Lord, that have given themselves to support with $300 every month for at least for a period of time. Oh, Lord, show them that you are Jehovah El Shaddai. Let them never lack or need anything that is good on this earth. Bless this church. Bless them, Virginia, Baltimore, Silver Springs, and Washington, and Columbia, and everywhere. Anoint them, Lord, with a new favor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. How many feel that God is working on your life? Wonderful. I want us to take out a powerful sacrificial offering this evening. Hmm? Tonight we are taking out a good offering. Are you there? Can we get, listen, hello, hello, can I speak to you please? Am I on? I want us to give a sacrificial offering tonight. Now listen, let me show you something. Anytime you see my face, you know that there are some expenses. Is that not so? I didn't, I didn't swim here. 
even the plane when we were coming was shaking for nine hours. How much more swimming? By now I will be eaten by a shark. You get it? It costs something for us to have such a program. Amen. So as you are giving, give so that the work of God can go on well. Amen. Take out a good offering, please. Tomorrow, we are continuing. Is that not so? Have you got your offering out? Let us pray. Father, thank you for a blessing to give. Prosper your people in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Ashes. Is there any Asha? Yeah, we got an Asha right there. Oh, my brother, what was your name again? Franklin. Franklin was so tired, but God bless you for coming. Amen. You know, I keep telling people, when you come for an all night evening and you sleep, there is a blessing in it. Because God has seen you at the program. Once you are spotted at the program, you gain some marks. <laughs> God is helping. Huh? Yeah, they want to sing again. What well, the same song? Oh, another song. Should know that.